Hello and welcome to another video about a FVWM re-release. This time it happens to be release 1.1.0, which was released on March the 30th, 2024, and it's going to be as exciting as it sounds. So there's a few things that I think are worth talking about as part of that release. Some of them are breaking changes, which as a user, you'll need to be aware of, so you can update your configuration. Others are enhancements to existing features, as well as a slew of bug fixes as well. So I'm going to start with some of the breaking changes. The first one is to do with three commands where we've updated the syntax. And those commands are go to desk, go to page and go to desk and page. Now, prior to this release, if you were wanting to tell FEWM to go to a specific desk on a specific monitor, you would have had a command which looked something like this. And what this would have done is said on monitor called EDP1, go to desk zero. Unfortunately, that syntax is not consistent with other commands in FEWM, which are already monitor or screen aware. Those commands actually would have had a literal keyword screen in front of them to make it apparent that the following command after it was an actual name of a monitor. And so to make the parsing easier on the go to desk, go to page and go to desk and page commands, we've actually changed the syntax such that the literal keyword screen is required when referring to specific monitors. Without that, it was quite messy to determine the presence or indeed the absence of a particular screen's name. So hopefully this is a minor inconvenience to something which simplifies things. <clears throat> OK, the next breaking change has been the dash S option to FEWM3 itself. And for those of you who or perhaps as old as me, if not older, and before the likes of Cinerama and Randa protocols came along, if you wanted to run individual instances of FEWM on specific connected monitors in X11, the only way to do it was to tell FEWM that you wanted to fork a specific instance on those displays. That worked fairly well, except for one of the bigger downsides is that in doing that, although you'd separated out your instances, you weren't able to move windows between those different displays, at least not easily. But since the R&R protocol came into existence many years later, it's actually made it easier to address monitors in very specific ways. One of the nice things about the RANDA protocol and FEW3 is the fact that you're able to now tell it that you wish to treat monitors as individual entities such that they have their own understanding of configured desktops. So with the removal of the dash S feature, and the reason we're doing that is because it's largely been replaced by Randa, to get the equivalent functionality, you should now set the following in your configuration file. And although it's not a complete like for like swap in terms of this option versus what you would have had with the dash S option, it's equivalent enough that we feel that the removal is worth it. And in doing so, it does simplify the code base somewhat and does make it much more maintainable. Okay, 
The other change that we've made is in the handling of geometry strings. So there has been for quite some time an extension to geometry strings whereby the string itself can be told where to place the window and that extension comes in the form of a at n option right at the end so for example if i wanted to place an fvwm buttons instance somewhere on my screen i can do so and it starts that, that that size and wherever and because i didn't actually specify where to place it it's put it in the top left corner i can always shift it down slightly if i wanted to place it on a particular monitor on the other hand uh, i've got two options i can either specify the name of the monitor if i do this you won't see it but i will get the same window but on a different monitor the at n part there actually refers to a number and much like the old Cinerama syntax if vwm3 now understands monitors can actually have assigned numbers to them and they're topographical in terms of how they're actually numbered so this monitor that you're looking at here actually starts at zero and that's actually going to place it over the other one i'll just move it out of the way with other monitors i've got i can reference them by their assigned number it's quite useful and i think it's worth exploring um, if you're wondering how the numbers are assigned um, have a look at the discussion page on github for fewm2 to fewm3 i will put some notes in the description on this video so you can explore that further but it that this change does align this much closer to the old cinerama way so hopefully that's useful if you're looking to migrate from two to three. Okay, the last big change is to do with the pager. And I said that we've added quite a few features to it uh, and particularly around how it handles multiple monitors. So. It's a couple of things that I think are worth highlighting here. The first one is how the pager looks by default. So if I just load up, give it a dummy alias, here I've got the pager as it's always looked. The big difference here is unlike before, if I click in this pager, I'm now going to see that it, this will switch to the specific monitor that that area occupies, um, which might not mean very much, but here at the moment, I'm on desk one on this monitor here. If I click here, this monitor We'll actually move across to desk zero and if i want to go back i can click again similarly if i go over here and so now what i'm trying to say is that the pager is aware of where you're clicking in the overview that it presents so this is showing a global overview of all of my connected monitors but where I click determines which desk and page the, the page is going to switch my viewport to. Now, this is really useful if you set your desktop configuration to per monitor. 
if you have it set to the default or you've never changed it or it's set to global, then the click is going to work in exactly the same way as it always has. You won't notice any difference. So that's the key thing. It's per monitor aware. Okay. So just be aware of that if you do have the per monitor desktop configuration set, because if you're clicking around, you might not realize that, oh, actually you've changed the wrong monitor. And I think that this change, although it might be seen as breaking, it was 90% of the way there to trying to do that anyway. It's just that we never got around to actually writing the logic. So the, the global overview for a per monitor desktop configuration setting never really made sense because it only ever reacted to the screen or monitor that the pager window was actually on. So it's actually even more confusing. So hopefully that particular change will simplify things. In order to try and make that a bit easier, there is a new setting in the pager called monitor labels. So if I just call up that configuration, you can see now I'm able to determine which of my monitors is where and although this may seem confusing i can already tell that you've got desk zero and here underneath that are the labels for all of my connected monitors and they repeat for all of the desks that the pager is showing so even without clicking anywhere i can tell that the monitor labeled DP2 is focused on desk zero. Monitors DVI-I22 and DP1 are independently on desk one and DPI-I11 is on desk four, looking at some window rather. So those are my four monitors and I know exactly which desk that they're on. I can even tell which particular page that they're all on. So this grid is still representing the fact that my desktop size is two by two. I therefore have four pages. And again, as before, if I click in these areas here, we'll actually get moved to the specific page in question so that's quite nifty actually and the monitor labels feature in particular just allows us to see much more visually which monitor is on which desk including page other things to note as well um, how this looks for a pager that's being asked to track a specific monitor so if i do that This works exactly the same way as it did before. I have my representation of this connected monitor that you're looking at. And the only thing that this one is going to be showing are all of the windows that are on this particular monitor. So as I move across here, you know, the existing pager will still update. And if I move to those pages, you'll, you'll see in the top pager there how that's being represented. And again, in the top pager, those pages are being moved relative to their position on the screen, but in the pager itself. So very much in line with how my other connected monitors are actually being represented here as well. So again, very useful. Now, there have been some other improvements some of these are harder to perhaps show on video but i'll try if i can so dragging windows works as you might expect so this window here you can see is represented here if i if I drag this window out, that's using the title bar, 
it moves down to the correct place over here. That's from DP2. I'm also able to move that window in the pager as I normally would and stick it wherever I like. So I could put it over here, for, for instance. And if I switch to that desk, do it here, there is that window that I've just moved. So that works as you might expect. The other thing that's worked as well is the scrolling within the viewport. So you know, if you were wanting to scroll and that's per monitor, so it's harder for me to drag that outside of the bounds of the monitor itself. And it may seem as though that's you know all very well, but you know is that it? Well, it is, um, and uh, it was a you know fairly difficult thing to get right. Uh, but I'm glad that we've done it um, because you know I think that these I'd, I'd argue usability improvements have actually uh, made things a lot easier. So those are the key things that you should be aware of. It's also worth noting as well that under the hood, the RANDA detection has changed. So this will handle the disconnect and connection of monitors more easily. And any configured pages that may or may not be tracking a disconnected monitor will resume that when, when that monitor is connected again. So this is really useful if you happen to have a laptop that you perhaps dock and undock to some connected monitors. Let's say you're at work and you have to go to a different room somewhere, then everything should just continue to work from where you picked up before when you come back to your desk. Uh, that's assuming you don't change anything. Uh, prior to that, the monitor connection disconnection was a little bit iffy and windows would disappear, pages would crash, and we spent quite a bit of time ensuring that we reduced the likelihood of that happening. So there's a few sort of quality of life improvements there that hopefully you'll notice. So I think that pretty much completes the core things that I wanted to go over. Do please have a look at the release notes because they will go into excruciating detail. And if you run into any problems or if you have any questions, please just open issues on GitHub and somebody will get around to answering them. But in the meantime, and until the next release, hopefully you found that useful. And if you have any particular recommendations for anything else you might want to see, do please let me know. Take care and thanks for listening.